and welcome back. Our second conversation this morning is one that I'm curious to find mm. out more about. Uh, we have been joined virtually by three representatives of Let's Go Belizing Limited. We have with us the Chief Executive Officer, Maria Mejia. Good morning, Maria. Hi, good morning. We also have the Chief Technology Officer joining us via Zoom, Abner Mendoza. Good morning, Abner. Good morning, Isani. And of course, the Project Coordinator, Ferdy Cobb. Good morning, Ferdy. Uh, good morning, Lizani. How are you? I'm good, brother. Okay, so let's go Belizing. Let's talk about that <laughs> first of all and the concept behind this particular initiative. And then secondly, we go into IDB's involvement. Um, so um, thanks for having us, Isani and um, Marlene, this morning. Uh, let's go Belizing is the name of our company. Um, so we're trying to... Um, we're a tourism technology company, okay. um, but separate from that, or I guess in, uh, together with that, we last year or two years ago, actually, almost two years ago, we had um, submitted our proposal as a response to the IDB tourism, Beyond Tourism Innovation Challenge. Mm -hmm. And so what we're here uh, this morning to talk about is, in fact, um, the... Um, you know, what's happening, the status of that project and, and, and where we are within that project. Um, the Tourism Innovation Challenge was a, an initiative by the IDB together with the UN World Tourism Organization. And uh, it was a, an effort to see how we can reimagine tourism post-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so our um, proposal was submitted, um, was accepted from among 214 uh, proposals that were submitted. Um, and we were one of 18 that were accepted for financing by the IDB. Um, I don't know if uh, you want me to get in yeah. now into the details of no, it. No, no, can I, can no, I step fine. back for a bit? Thank you so much sure. for being with us and, and congratulations on being included in the project. I know we spoke with, uh, uh, I know um, Let's Go Belizing a few years ago when you first started. And if I recall correctly, um, it was an online hub for people to be able to find anything in Belize related to tourism. So if it was a, a, a tour, if it was a hotel, if it was a, a nighttime activity, they'd be able to get it um, on Let's Go Belizing's website. Talk to us about uh, how, what the uptake was like since then and how it's progressed. Do we want to get Mary in here? Maria. Hi, Maria. Maria. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Hi, morning. Yes. So since our company launched in 2018, I think our primary objective has always been innovation. And we concentrate on creating products and providing services that will not only stimulate the use of technology, but make it accessible to everyone. And that was like the goal behind Belizing.com, which was our first service to say that we were providing and now it has become one of the largest marketplace for tourism services in Louise, including tours, shuttle services, and we even have um, all the premium hotels listed on our platform as of now. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we also provide different type of technology expertise, including a platform called the leasing payments. Um, we provide digital marketing services to our partners. And in addition to that, in 2020, we also launched um, the first Belize Travel Cast, which is a podcast that we um, host and we talk about different um, travel trends, different things that are happening within the sector here in Belize. So that's how the company has evolved over the last five years to say. And this project is actually um, a new initiative that we're working on, but falls within that same mission in mind, which is to ensure that we provide um, stimulate the use of technology. And in addition to that, we make it accessible to everyone. What has been public interest and participation in this initiative? Well, the project itself recently um, 
what recently started to some extent, which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why we're currently building awareness for it. Yeah. Um, the agreement was signed in May of last year. However, the first six months were spent mainly on getting all the prior conditions in place that are required by the um, donor agency, which is in IDB. Mm -hmm. um, but the execution of the project actually began until maybe November of 2021. Yeah. So we're still in the early stages of execution. And one of the things that we are working on right now is a project um, launch video in which um, the public will find out more information about the project. And in addition to that, they'll learn how they can maybe um, participate and, and help us um, get the project and um, bring the project to life. Mm -hmm. mm. So this innovation um, uh, lab, it gives you an opportunity, I mean, it gives you funding, one, but it also gives you the legitimacy for partnerships. And in fact, one of those partnerships is with the Belize Tourism Board. Ferdi, do you want to tell us a bit more about how that allows for an expansion in what you've already been doing? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, Marlene, you, you mentioned uh, that we do create and we will be creating more partnership. As in any project, it is important to bring in key stakeholders. One of the key stakeholders at this point is the Ministry of Tourism and the BTB. Uh, we had a, a meeting already with the Minister of, of, of Tourism, and he has vetted his uh, his uh, commitment in continue participating, not only in providing technical uh, assistance, but us also giving the Ministry of Tourism more uh, uh, knowledge in the use of this platform, since this is one of the things that uh, Belizeing.com has been doing for the past years. Um, one of the things that we want to highlight is that for this project to be successful, we are bringing in uh, uh, a, a wide range of, of partners and uh, that will ensure that this is uh, well known across the country. We would be we already have on board uh, Bell Trade, we have on board uh, the private sector, we have on board the Ministry of Education, we, uh, we have also involved the Office of the Prime Minister and other entities that will ensure that uh, at the end of the of the life of the project there is sustainable sustainability not only for for the company itself and the tourism sector but to a larger scale so that uh, the small and medium sized enterprises would be able to continue using uh, what we are bringing to them as an innovation and in technology all right so Talk to us, you're, you're fairly young, the three of you guys here, you're young men and, and women. In terms of bringing your ideas together in the technological space, what was that like? I mean, you formed a company, it's, everything is legit and above board, but in terms of the concept, how did this all come together? Um, I can speak to that. So, like um, Maria alluded to, Belizing came about, the idea of Belizing came about uh, because we saw a, a need in the market for um, inclusive growth within tourism, right? Yeah. Um, there was, there's, the, there's the digital divide where you have the bigger companies with all the resources and expertise and the budget yeah. um, to engage in the digital marketplace. And then you had the smaller, the smaller tourism enterprises, the mom and pop shops, if you will, mm -hmm. um, who didn't have those resources. And so we thought we could fill that gap, uh, come in with the technology expertise that we had. And so we began um, just getting involved with the different stakeholders and different players in tourism uh, as our as we started our business. This was back in 20, 2018. So we're a fairly new new company. Um, I, I want to take you back to a few years ago. In fact, I met uh, Isani for the first time, and you don't remember this, uh, at the BTB Digital Marketing Summit. Yeah. Um, one year that I attended. And it occurred to me that um, it was a really impactful event for us, and it was really a large part of what we were doing as Belizing.com and what we wanted to provide uh, to, to, to the more vulnerable stakeholders within tourism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that, you know, this is something, this is a great event. Um, and one of the signature events of 
community and it's something that we can continue to do online. Uh, someone, someone at that event actually said, well, how can, how can someone far away who, who doesn't have transportation come here for a day? I mean, there's a lot of costs involved uh, um, to attend an event like that. And it occurred to me that, okay, technology can solve this problem. Uh, we can go to them uh, using technology. And at that time, you know, um, the idea of webinars and, and, and online meetings and all that was not as prevalent as it is now. Um, so um, we, we started doing webinars. In fact, we partnered with the Belize Hotel Association and we started offering a monthly free digital marketing webinar. And we had really good response from that. Yeah. And so as we went along, we learned kind of, you know, how to, how to manage um, getting people to participate in online training, uh, just online webinars, um, how to make that connection within the stakeholders and the experts that are out there that can provide some useful information, stakeholders, actionable information that they can use and, and do better online. Um, so that was the goal of that partnership with the hotel association. And then as the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. um, everything shut down. Um, you know, there was a lot of displaced workers in the tourism industry. Um, and so again, we partnered with uh, the, the uh, uh, hospitality training services. They had a brilliant idea of offering their services, their training. They have uh, training that are uh, through um, an international um, certified body, uh, AHLEI, I believe, um, in, the, in the hotel industry. And so they had this brilliant idea. And then I just we just came across it and we partnered with them. And then we were able to bring our technology expertise, our experience from doing all those webinars all those months prior uh, with the Belize Hotel Association. We partnered with uh, Hospitality Training Services and we had a tremendous response to that offer of free training online. Uh, it was in a span of a couple of weeks, uh, sometime in May, June, April, May, June of 2020, just as we were in the middle of the lockdown. Um, and so we saw again that need in the tourism industry, number one, that we're gonna have to rebuild. Um, but more importantly, there was, a, there was a desire within the workforce to kind of upskill uh, build capacity, learn new things, because we saw, we realized that the digital transformation is going to have to happen now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, post pandemic, uh, everything is going to move digital. And so um, we, when we saw that, it just so happens when we were doing that, it just so happens that this, uh, this call for uh, innovation uh, proposals came out from the from the IDB. And so we looked at it and we said, okay, um, there was two focus areas, one on workforce uh, development mm -hmm. and one on environmental, environmental sustainability. Uh, so we thought we could fill, um, we could do something uh, innovative in that space of workforce development because in fact that's what we were doing at that time with yeah. those partnerships with the hotel association, with uh, hospitality training services. Um, and so we realized that it was something we could do um, and so we responded to the to the to the innovation challenge um, because of so that's how it came about how we were able to to send in a, a proposal that was ultimately successful. Now, as a, um, as a group of young entrepreneurs yourselves, um, and and what you're doing is as you call it, um, uh, your marketing um, uh, businesses who are uh, offering services and products in tourism. But did you ever see yourself getting to this point? Of course. Yeah, that was always the plan? <laughs> no, um, yes, of course. I mean, there's always, I mean, you know, from a business perspective, there is always, you know, we looked at it and we, we have a strategic plan of growth uh, yeah. of, uh, along the years. Of course, we didn't see exactly that it's going to come. I mean, no one could have predicted the pandemic. Yeah. And we didn't really see ourselves um, in this space specifically um, with the IDB grant and all of this. But um, it was always our mission to, 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 of inclusive growth, um, of collaboration. I mean, from the, from the onset of the business, we knew that to be successful, we had to collaborate. We had to partner with, with stakeholders across the tourism value chain, um, you know, and on every level, from the biggest yeah. uh, companies to the smallest companies. It's, it's all about collaboration. And again, and this project itself, I mean, to be successful, 
collaboration again is key and really that's something that we've embraced from the beginning so um while of course we didn't see ourselves here specifically there's always that vision of growth yeah. and, and that we're going to be how integral has the inter-american development bank been in terms of your collective vision one and two your continued growth and development in this particular space how integral have they been? Uh, yes. Well, so they, so uh, this this project, um, this proposal was from 2020. In fact, they were on uh, this show here with mm -hmm. I think the two of you um, when this was released. Um, it was many many months of planning and detailed project, um, you know, detailed planning of the project mm -hmm. um, to to come to this point. And their team was very integral. They brought experts. Um, from uh, from all from all areas, they brought in experts to kind of help us with the project planning, contribute um, ideas on, on how different things would work uh, within the project. So they were very very integral in bringing us to this point where we are now launching the project uh, or starting to implement the project and launching the project. Yeah. Um, so number one, the financing that they bring. And then the expertise that they bring uh, to the table was was very very important, and I think is going to make a huge impact in the success of this project um, and how impactful it can be in the tourism industry in Belize. So you know, I, I want to bring it home for our viewers. We, we talked a lot about your own growth and and the opportunity that comes here um, for those who partner with you, but even for viewers, uh, it does become an opportunity for them to be able to seek source. Uh, seek services that they may need. If I want to go somewhere in the West this weekend, a eh, romantic weekend coming up and I want to find something, your site is there to be able to help them. And it's not just the big name, uh, big but bigger budgeted uh, uh, destinations and tours that will be on there. Do you want to talk about how this uh, is a tool for Belizeans as well? Well, I think um, what you're talking about is Belizeing.com, and, and, and that's that's great. The the IDB Tourism Innovation uh, Project or the, the Belizeing Tourism Innovation Lab, um, while yes, it is part of Belizeing.com, and yes, it part of the goal is to get more um, small tourism businesses involved on Belizeing.com. I think the larger goal of this project is really workforce development within the tourism industry and how we can use technology to provide um, training to the workforce, to upskill the workforce for the digital transformation necessary for them to become more competitive, to give them that market intelligence that they need to be more competitive and ultimately to get more bookings online. So, um, you know, I kind of want to, I, I see what you're saying, but I want to, kind of bring the focus back on what this project is about, which is workforce development impacting the tourism workforce uh, in Belize. Yes, of course. And so I think that if we're able to tell people what it means for them. So if I am a small service provider, how will I benefit from the project? One, I may be able to get the skill sets necessary, but how do I sign up and where do I go? I think... I'll ask Maria to, to, to fill in on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, at the moment, um, in, in terms of the, the project itself, one of the things that one of the results will be an online learning platform where um, small tourism businesses in Belize will be able to um, get trained in digital skills and, and so on. But at the moment, if you're referring to Belizing.com, then businesses could already sign up. They can go on Belizing.com and there is a specific area where businesses can start to sign up and become a part of the platform. However, for the project specifically, the idea here is to use an AI recommendation engine to sort of create a specific um, curriculum that is based on the capacity needs of the industry and 
then create courses that are based on this, you know, and the courses will then be available on an online marketplace, similar to something like Blazing.com, but it's more like a learning platform. So um, tourism service providers, as well as employees will be able to receive that training within that platform. Yes, so um, what are some of the topics that you envision will be included? Uh, how do you help, and I know you have a specific target of trying to help some of the smaller businesses, what are, are some of the skill sets that you think they will need? And, and yeah, let me, let me answer that, uh, that question, Marlene. Yes, and that is one of the, the, the innovations that, believe, that Let's Go Belize in brings in. You know? uh, we've been talking about the, the tourism sector in reference to what they're looking for. And you, you mentioned, uh, for example, this weekend, uh, they can go in the platform and so forth and look uh, of what are the, the, the different areas or the different tours that they can get. But this project itself, uh, brings an innovation for this small and medium-sized enterprises uh, in the country. We know that they need to keep uh, uh, competitive in the in the tourism sector. So this is where uh, Let's Go Belize comes with the expertise and the innovation of using technology. Mm -hmm. uh, they would be uh, th what they have at this point is the AI that uh, my colleague mentioned, the artificial intelligence uh, platform, where they would be where the project will come in and look at what are the trending topics, what are the tours that are a little bit more uh, in demand and so forth. So there is where we go about uh, designing and creating uh, curriculums that are specific for the different small and medium sized businesses that will meet their 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 demand in, and in turn building capacity not only in the workforce but also building capacity in the marketplace so that they would know what to offer uh, how to be a little bit more competitive with with larger businesses or with what the tourism sector is asking and when we talk about tourism sector or the tourism we are not only targeting the international tourism but we are also targeting the local yeah. tourism yeah. Um, ensuring that these businesses uh, will increase their sales over time, will be able to have better uh, workforce um, development, and also giving the quality of service that within the, the tourism sector that is expected. So that's in in, in turn uh, how us as 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 the executing agency will come in with this expertise of the use of AI, which is the artificial intelligence, with the data sharing, with the use of technology that could be under the fingertips, that they could be able to uh, develop all these um, uh, uh, factors that will uh, make them continue contributing to the economic uh, development in the country. Have, have local companies gravitated towards this particular idea? Yes, uh, of course, we've had already uh, some partners and, and that is one of the reasons we are also here is to make a call to these small businesses and medium-sized businesses and tell them how they could be part of this uh, 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 project itself. And then, I, well, my colleague could also elaborate a little bit more how they have been using, because we already have a database that uh, Let's Go Belizing has in hand and allowed us to, to become the executing um, agency for this project. Yeah, so we do have um, more than 100 partners already listed on Belizing.com. Um, those um, partners are small businesses providing tourism services in Belize at the moment. Now, this new project is sort of an extension of that, is how do we um, provide or transform workforce development in Belize by providing the proper or adequate training necessary, right? However, for the project specifically, this is actually the first time we're um, talking about it to the public to some extent. Yeah. So we are hopeful that after this, we kind of get more people involved, more um, tourism businesses to participate and maybe reach out to us to see how they can be a part of it. 
But nonetheless, we already have a database, like Ferdy mentioned, of all these small, um, small businesses that have partnered with us over the years. These include companies all over the country, um, whether it's tour companies, hotels. We're also partners um, with the Belize Hotel Association. So we have a database already that we want to just add to that and, and hopefully get more businesses involved in how this initiative um, can help them, right? Um, but I'd like to point out that this is actually the first time that we're talking about it to the public. So um, hopefully after this, we get a lot more people to, to participate and, and, and share in, 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 in the process of, of executing this, this project. All right. Any final words, guys? Let's start with... Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> but I think um, we just wanted to kind of come on this show and, and to let... It, so that people could become excited about this idea. Yeah. I mean, we ourselves are very excited to not only transform workforce development in Belize, but facilitate the adoption of technology yeah. and encourage inclusive growth. I'd like to point out, um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but one of our biggest target audiences for this initiative is female-led enterprises mm. in, in Belize. And we are hopeful that um, it will help businesses, smaller businesses, um, become more competitive and resilient in the market. And we know that the pandemic affected all businesses in tourism in Belize, but we are hopeful that this initiative could help these businesses um, adjust to similar economic shocks in the future much better. All right. And if people, someone sees this right now, they have a service, a product, or a tour they would like to, to, to um, promote and learn how to promote through your services, how do they get in touch? You can um, email us at support at .com. That's usually um, more than one person would be able to answer that. Um, our office is located in San Ignacio, Cayo. So um, feel free to just contact us via the email or via our Facebook page, and we will have one of our team members get in touch. Um, not only to assist you in maybe becoming a partner on Belizing.com, but also how do you become a partner with us for this new initiative yeah. with the IDB Lab. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us and for letting us know the latest developments. Uh, of course, this will be so useful um, in helping people uh, develop the skills that they need to keep on pushing their own product and the overall product of, of Belize as a destination. Thank you and best of luck. Thank, thank you. you too. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take our final break. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap up. So stay tuned.